At the end of the 1960s, the British military received a main battle tank of the new generation. The Chieftain, as it was called, was very different from its European and Soviet counterparts. It was a combat vehicle with very comfortable crew stations, excellent armor, and a powerful gun. At the same time, this level of survivability and firepower was achieved by sacrificing the vehicle's mobility. Chieftains remained in service for several decades and proved to be pretty effective. After all, at the end of the 20th century, it was the Chieftain that became the base for a new generation of British MBTs. In War Thunder, tanks of the Chieftain series are found at rank 6 of the ground force's tech tree. As in real life, the way they are used in battle is very different from other MBTs. These are tough, slow beasts, specified to primarily fight from defensive positions and to push enemy flanks. The first Chieftain available in the game is the Mark III. The main idea behind the Chieftain is that it should be incredibly hard to destroy if it's dug in or positioned behind a hill or some good cover. This principle is reflected in the tank's armor arrangement. If hull down, the tank's turret is basically impervious to APHE and early subcaliber rounds. Hell, not every APFSDS round can penetrate the upper part of the Mark III's turret, and the lower part isn't particularly vulnerable either. Heat projectiles and HEGMs are the main threat to the Chieftain, but even if they achieve penetration, the tank is still not likely to sustain serious damage. The worst case scenario is that you lose your commander, your gunner, or both. Now let's talk about the hull. Its upper part is sloped at more than 70 degrees. On a small hill, it can be almost impenetrable, if it's not hit at an angle of 90 degrees. In that case, 86 millimeters of armor can be defeated even by some very old guns. If you want to unlock the Chieftain's full potential, we suggest that you should stick to cover, make good use of 10 degrees of gun depression, which is nothing short of excellent, and always hide your lower glacis behind terrain or rubble. In the tank's frontal arc, it's the most vulnerable area that can be penetrated even by AA vehicles. Moreover, the lower frontal plate has the driver and several ammo racks right behind it. Keep in mind, though, that you can minimize the risks by taking no more than 25 rounds to battle. The Chieftain is armed with a Royal Ordnance L-11 cannon with a two-plane stabilizer, as well as three machine guns. The tank doesn't have access to APF-SDS rounds. The only ammo you can use are APDS, HESH, and smoke shells. Don't worry, though. L-15 APDS rounds are still pretty effective. Every single one of those weighs more than 7.5 kilos. That's basically two 105mm DM-23 rounds that are very common at this BR. Because of that, an L-15 deals considerably more damage than an APF SDS. Granted, it doesn't have the same penetration rate, but the difference is not that big. Conqueror and Conway tanks have access to similar rounds, but it takes their guns 15 seconds to reload, while the Chieftain takes only around 8. That means that when it comes to fire rate, this British MBT is almost as fast as its Western counterparts, armed with guns of smaller caliber, and is faster than Soviet vehicles. Against lightly armored targets, the Chieftain has HESH rounds that are filled with 4 kilograms of hexogen. In order to maximize the effectiveness of your shots with these rounds, use the coaxial machine gun for ranging. At medium range, it's a good predictor of where your HESH and smoke shells are going to go. Furthermore, a maxed out Chieftain is also equipped with a rangefinder that allows you to get the precise range to targets that are up to a kilometer away. Other machine guns are not as useful, but they can still be helpful when dealing with open top vehicles. Unfortunately, most IFVs and light tanks found at rank 6 are equipped with good enough armor to ignore your machine gun fire. So, the only thing you can achieve by shooting at them is just marking them on the minimap. The best tactic for the Chieftain works like this. You peek out of cover while carefully positioning yourself at a slight angle so that you don't expose your hull cheeks, then make a quick shot and get back into cover. Your rounds are pretty powerful, so in most cases, you don't really have to be too deliberate with aiming. The armor of this vehicle is tough enough to withstand a lot of return fire, but don't expose yourself for too long as the enemies still might destroy your gun.
The main problem the tank has is its limited mobility. Your transmission allows the Chieftain to go at up to 41 kilometers per hour, or at up to 9 kilometers per hour in reverse. When you put it in reverse, it goes pretty fast from the get-go, but it also has trouble accelerating. Its power to weight ratio is just around 12 horsepower per ton. That's on par with the Tiger heavy tank, but this is a modern MBT that we're talking about. In other words, the Chieftain is going to be stationary most of the time, and it's best used on positions close to spawn points that still give you a lot of reach. We're talking about the spots like the hill slope next to C on Ash River, the area around B on Berlin, or the rocks next to A on Middle East. In most cases, it's not a good idea to try to get to sniping positions that are a long way away from spawn points, as there's a possibility that our slow tank will just be taken out somewhere en route. At the same time, don't stay in your initial spot for too long. By the time the fight reaches its middle stage, you should already be able to fight at mid or even close range. Even though the Chieftain was the main battle tank of the UK for several decades, the Army wasn't particularly happy with the performance of its original power plant. The Chieftain Mark V was the first model where they tried to fix this problem by fitting the vehicle with a more powerful 760 horsepower engine. It helped a little bit, sure, but it's still one of the slowest MBTs out there. Moreover, the tank received a new transmission, allowing it to reach a speed of 48 kilometers per hour but only on a good road or when moving downhill. About 20 kilometers per hour out of that can only be achieved on the last gear, which makes it next to impossible to use the engine to its full potential. At the same time, the Mark V faces more dangerous enemies, like the Soviet T-72B. The good news is that more advanced Soviet designs can still be defeated by hitting them right under the turret, through the driver's hatch or the LFP but don't ever engage them without a plan, especially at a distance. This way, the T-64BV and the T-72B will be almost impervious to your fire. There's also another important thing to consider. The Mark V has a smaller first order rat of only 17 rounds. And here's the dilemma of the later chieftains. You can either take less ammo with you to be safe or risk having an ammo rack right next to the driver. Try both options and see which one is better for you personally, but we suggest that you should always pack at least some HESH rounds. They're too good against lightly armored targets to pass up completely. Finally, there's the Mark 10, with its turret fitted with Stillbrew armor. This armor package brings the tank's survivability to a whole new level, making it considerably harder for modern rounds like the BM-22 Zakolka, the 3BM-42 Mango, or the 120mm DM-23 APF SDS to successfully penetrate the tank's defenses. The Mark 10 also received a new round, the L-23 APF SDS, which is pretty similar to the 120mm DM-13 performance-wise. Furthermore, the MBT was fitted with a new fire control system with a laser rangefinder, which makes aiming even easier thanks to its automatic sight adjustment. There was also a proposal for a new autocannon SPAA vehicle based on the Chieftain Mark 10, the Chieftain Marksman. Its design is very reminiscent of the classic Western SPAAs. Fitted with a Marconi radar and two Ehrlichan anti-aircraft autocannons, it's very effective against helicopters and early jets. Compared to the Gepard and similar AA systems, it comes with a heavier, bulkier chassis. Gameplay-wise, on a marksman, it's a good idea to stick to your teammates and be careful with your position. A couple of advantages you get are a nice max depression of minus 10 degrees with both autocannons and a high turret traverse speed. At the same time, due to the way cannons are mounted and their convergence is set up, it might be pretty difficult to aim at times, especially at close range. All things considered, though, a well-positioned marksman can hold its ground against several air or ground targets at once, and its hull is sturdy enough to protect you from a stray shot. Even though chieftains are well known for having limited mobility, the overall design of the tank proved to be very effective. By the end of the Cold War, the caliber of 120mm became the NATO standard, and newer British tanks inherited the best traits of their predecessor. In War Thunder, the Chieftain is certainly an unusual MBT, but a very effective one nevertheless. Do you like using it in battle? 
tell us in the comments below.